right, well, let's get started, everybody. Welcome to our second Home Office Hours Live with Vistaprint. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is our second episode in this series we've started. We'll be hosting live discussions on timely topics. We'll feature guest speakers and our very own Vistaprint team members. And our goal here with this series is to provide you with education and advice for surviving these unprecedented times during the COVID-19 crisis. We know that small business needs have changed during this time and we wanted to help. So we've created this home office hours series as a way to connect during this time when we're all spending a lot of time indoors and we're dealing with various challenges, technology and all other kinds of challenges that come with working from home. So we've tapped our colleagues to help answer some of the questions that you're all having as small business owners. And one question that we know many businesses had and continue to have, COVID-19 or not, how can customers find me online via search engines? So to dig into this, I have with me today, Luca Barris, Organic Search Lead at Vistaprint. Luca, can you say hello? Hey everyone. Hey Luca. We also have Katie Eldred, Organic Search Lead here at Vistaprint. Katie, can you say hello to the audience? Hi everyone. Hey Katie. And our guest panelist today here is Alexa Matthews. She is the founder of At Eating NYC, a food-focused digital brand. Alexa, can you say hello? Hi, everybody. Hey, Alexa. So thank you for joining us. Um, before we get started today, a few housekeeping options. We will have a section for questions at the end. However, please feel free to submit your questions all throughout the session using the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. And we'll also be sending the recording out to you after we wrap up. So let's start with the big picture. The world was already digital and getting found online has been a pain point for many businesses before our current situation. For example, we know from a search engine land study that 53% of all site traffic comes from search engine optimization and organic search has the highest conversion rate of any digital channel. However, according to a study we did here at Vistaprint, 56% of all businesses actually don't have a website. So Luca, can you start us off with an overview of what one should think about as a business that given our current situation wants to get started on, refine or polish up their strategy for getting found in search engine results? Yeah, sure. So one of the things I'd like to start off with saying is that I think there's a lot of information about SEO, which can be really confusing. Uh, and it's true, there's like a ton of information. But for most small businesses, SEO is a fairly simple process, as long as you stick to the main uh, four important things that I would say are important for small businesses. And those are uh, making sure you have a Google My Business listing, trying to drive links to your site, trying to get reviews that are positive, and trying to do research on local keywords that are relevant to your site. Because all these things are things that Google's looking for when it's trying to rank small business websites. So if you have these four main things down, you won't have to worry too much about any of the technical stuff that you might see online, um, and you'll be in a pretty good spot. Awesome, well, thank you. I think it's very reassuring to hear you say that SEO can be very simple. I think a lot of us hear the term search engine optimization and right off the bat, even the term itself is a little intimidating. So do you have any particular points that you would make um, for right now during the period of pandemic where online behaviors have changed as we've all gone inside? Yeah, so I would say it's, it's different for every website for sure, but for the most part, it's important not to do anything drastic like taking down your website. You definitely don't wanna do that because if you take down your site or a lot of pages on your site, Google won't be able to find them uh, during this time period and you'll probably lose rankings. That'll be difficult to get back. So that's something you wanna avoid. But in place of doing that, you can't take orders or you can't service customers in the way that you used to. Try to put some kind of messaging on your site that lets them know that. During this time period, I think a lot of people will be understanding of that. And again, if you can't take orders, try to limit functionality like, um, you know, get rid of your add to cart button or just disable it, stuff like that until you know you can start uh, fulfilling those types of orders and services again. Great, thank you. 
if you are one of those many businesses that doesn't have a website, how, what do you suggest for steps to take to get started? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of options that you can look at. You know, I think the, the first thing for me is just to make sure that you try to get one up. It doesn't really matter too much what platform you use, whether it's Wix, WordPress, Squarespace, Vistaprint has their own uh, website builder as well, which you can try. But I mean, any of those options work and they all um, are findable by Google, so they're all good options. And I would definitely try to look into making sure that you put content on the page that's helpful for your users and you know try to edit the metadata that's on those pages like the title tags and meta descriptions which are all facets of uh, every website on the web great thank you so alexa i'd like to hear from you a little bit what has your experience been you're a founder of a digital brand that's based on being on the ground and documenting your experiences at local businesses how have you adjusted during this time yeah, well, um, you know, it's been pretty crazy. I would say it started out by, um, you know, having things get canceled kind of um, gradually, but also all at the same time. And, you know, I really had to take a step back and um, reevaluate what my strategy was going to be. So um, if you go to my Instagram page or my website, you'll see that a lot of the work that I do is um, promoting local restaurants and businesses, um, you know, now that most of all restaurants here in New York City are um, closed. It you know, kind of went from me going to these restaurants and events um, to me supporting those restaurants in a different way. Um, now I've been focused on highlighting restaurants that are doing um, delivery and takeout, um, focusing on restaurants that have GoFundMe page or doing things for the hospitals. Um, so it's just kind of been a matter of you know, pivoting and taking a step back and looking at other ways that I can best support these small businesses during this time. I love that. It's so great to see founders supporting other small businesses. So thank you. Yeah. So Katie, obviously we know that things have changed completely, but businesses should still be working to be found and to connect with their customers and communities, right? Even though people can't actually go to their physical locations. Yes, absolutely they should. Yeah. So I know that, that that's a daunting task for a lot of our small businesses. What would you suggest as an easy first step to take when you're starting to try to get found locally in your search results? I think one of the easiest and most effective things that businesses can do is to really take a look at their Google My Business listing. So you can see an example of that on the screen. This is what I mean. It's that little box that appears at the top of Google that has your business name, some information about your business, um, contact details, all of that kind of thing. So the first thing to do is check that you've actually claimed this listing. So you can just do a simple Google search with your business name and the location and just check that that listing exists and whether you've already claimed it. If it's not claimed, you'll get a prompter that says, are you this business owner, claim this listing now? And you can go through the verification process really easily. With, once you've already claimed it, or if you, maybe you've already got it, um, it's really just about completing all the information as fully and accurately as possible. So obviously adding in your business name, your opening hours, what your business does, really using all the features that are available to you. It's really important to include your address on there, especially for local search, as this is what means you will be discovered in maps too. So when you perform a search on Google and you see that map appear first, that information is pulled from your Google My Business listing. So it's really important to have everything filled in, filled in as accurately and fully as possible. Well, that seems relatively simple. Thank you, Katie. Alexa, can you tell us a little bit about how you as a blogger and a content creator go about trying to make sure that you come up in local searches? For sure. Um, so my knowledge of SEO is pretty basic um, overall. So for me, it's been really about making sure I'm plugging in keywords to my blog post. So things like um, NYC local delivery, support small business NYC, um, near me, just using those keywords that I think are going to be really relevant to my audience and um, help out people who are um, searching for ways to support restaurants here in New York. Awesome. I think that's a great start. And I think we have the exact right people here on this panel um, yeah. to help you level up that strategy. 
Katie, can you help Alexa and our audience with some things that small businesses can do in addition to help themselves get found via local search? Sure, so a great tactic. It's great to include local keywords in your website. So things like city names, town names, even relevant street names are really important in giving Google more context about where you operate and where you're based. And that really helps you when it comes to these local searches, for example, pizza restaurant near me, that's the kind of search that you want your restaurant to appear at. So it's great to include those local, those uh, local names in your website. You can take that one step further by doing keyword research. So there's plenty of tools out there that help you with this. So those tools will give you an idea of how many people are searching for different terms and you can incorporate those terms on your website. Some of those are paid, some of those are free. You can kind of find which one works for you. If you don't have access to a keyword tool though, you can even use the autocomplete bar in Google. So you could put something, for example, bicycle repair Cambridge, and you could see what Google suggests the autocomplete as. And they're a really great start as well for good keywords to use on your website. Thank you. So we also mentioned earlier that reviews are a really great way to improve local search. Can you tell us a little bit more about how someone could use reviews to help their business come up in search results? Sure, so we're a great way to boost business, not just from SEO in general. I think most people are more likely to use a business if they've read a great review. So it's a really good strategy, not only for SEO, but also for your business in general. This has also been confirmed by Google that it is something that it takes into account when it comes to visibility and the search results. So having a lot of really good quality high star rating reviews is really important and will really give you a boost. The great thing about reviews is that people are using their own language to describe your business and what you do, which is really the right kind of language that resonates with your audience. So it's really, really valuable content and will definitely give you a boost. So I think now is a great time to reach out to your customers and say, hey, I know that this is happening and we're all stuck indoors, but I would really appreciate a review. Um, I think now is the time where people are really looking for ways to support businesses. And I think that's a really nice um, way to do it. One thing I would also say is if you do have negative reviews or in the past, if you've had a negative review or if you receive one, don't worry, it happens. It's not the end of the world. The most important thing is just responding to that review in a really friendly and respectful way. That also really builds trust with your business and shows exactly the type of business you are. So it's definitely not a bad thing. And you just respond to that in a really respectful way. Yeah, honestly, I can't agree more about the importance of reviews. I know that's one of the very first things that I personally, as a consumer, look for when I'm searching online. And a lot of times I'll even type in the name of the business along with reviews as my search term and just go right there to start looking at those. So I know those are really critical. So let's talk a little bit about link earning now. I think this is an area that a lot of people know is important, but they don't know where to start. So Katie, how can a business owner get started earning links? Yeah, so link earning is important because each time you get a link, it's like a vote of confidence from another website for your website. So it's showing Google that you're an authoritative source about something that other websites trust your website enough to link to you. So that's why it's important and it really helps boost you in terms of SEO. I think when we talk about this on a local level, it's also really important to remember uh, how important a sense of community is. So if you're a local business, like really being an active part of your local community is really another way that you can boost your authority. You'll naturally earn links and lots of mentions by doing kind of local neighborhood activities. And it also gives your web presence just more of a local feel. It's again, it's more context for Google about where you're based and, and what you're involved with. In terms of getting backlinks at this time, I think one thing that um, could be a great idea is there's lots of local press outlets or media sites that are doing roundups about what small businesses are doing, especially local ones. So what are our local businesses doing in response to this crisis that we find ourselves in? So it's definitely worth reaching out to your local media outlet or your, the local press to just let them know if you've got an especially creative response to this crisis, let them know about it. You never know. It's obviously not guaranteed that they will feature you, but you might be featured in an article and you might get a great backlink to your site from a really high, high authority source. So I love that idea. So I think we've got some really good tips um, already for the basics of getting found by search engines. So I'd like to ask you, Alexa, your brand, Eating NYC, 
you have a really strong presence on Instagram. Do you have any tips for also getting found on social? Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, some of these definitely hop off what Katie was saying in the ways that, you know, I've been reaching out to restaurants that I have relationships with and seeing how I can help. Um, you know, there's so many small things you can do, even um, just with, for example, your Instagram story. Last week, Instagram came out with a stay home sticker and they were um, bumping every person that used that sticker to the beginning of their stories. And that was really boosting impressions a lot. So if I was posting anything, um, you know, that I thought was really relevant to the stay home sticker, promoting specific restaurants, petitions, or things like that, I really saw a boost in engagement. So that was a really great way to increase impressions. Um, I would say, you know, continue to use relevant hashtags that are related to this, um, you know, similar to what you would do for an SEO search. So small business NYC support, small business NYC delivery, um, things like that, that I think people might be searching for um, on Instagram. And um, also I would say, you know, another big thing for me has been really using my audience um, and hearing what they want. So I'm, you know, either using polls or quizzes or prompting them directly, what do you want to see? What are you having trouble with? What can I help you with right now? Um, and, you know, it's been, you know, of course I can always guess, but why do that when I have this engaged audience who can tell me exactly what it is that they're wanting to see right now? And um, I think by doing that, the results really are twofold because now they feel even more invested in the content that I'm sharing because that's what they've selected um, to kind of be a part of. So, yeah. Absolutely. I think it's, it's so important to ask your audience for feedback and to act on that. From a standpoint of someone who is creating content that you want found online, what would you tell some of the other people out there right now who are running their own brands and businesses? Um, you know, I would say to really stay focused on what people are interested in. So for me, um, like I've mentioned, it's really focusing on how to support um, restaurants and small businesses. Um, it's also been a lot more about home cooking. So I've taken approaches of, you know, creating popular NYC restaurant dishes at home, um, doing more Instagram live videos, um, doing some workouts, kind of sharing with people what I think or what they've told me that they're interested in seeing. Um, but I do think it's really important in the midst of all this to be extra sensitive and kind of keep that lens on because I have been seeing that um, there are, you know, people are feeling very critical and um, there are a lot of different emotions that everyone is feeling um, every day right now more than ever. So I think, you know, even something as simple as um, promoting delivery, there's some people who feel that that's not safe or they're not really, you know, supportive of that. So I think even something as simple as that, just being aware that um, we're in a time where not everyone is going to be agreeing or seeing things the same way and um, just, you know, thinking of that as you post and, you know, be willing to explain your perspective and what you're trying to do, I think really goes a long way in that. And um, it's, it's ultimately a fine line, I think, overall, as we're all navigating this path is um, balancing the, you know, how we're trying to go on with business as usual and um, take our next steps in moving forward with our business, but also being sensitive at the same time. And I think um, we're kind of always trying to find where that um, balance is. And I think keeping that in mind is really important. Absolutely. I, it's so important to be sensitive right now. So I appreciate that um, topic from you. So lastly, Katie and Luca, I know there is a ton of content out there on the web. Can you tackle some of the misconceptions that business owners might have when it comes to SEO? Sure, so uh, I'll mention is link buying. So you'll find a lot of people online that are willing to buy links or that are promoting link buying for you. Please don't do it. It's not a good SEO tip. Um, bought links are not valuable and you're much more likely to be penalized than Google actually boosting your search results uh, performance for those. Yeah, and uh, I, I want to jump in for these other two, which is um, one thing that I hear a lot or ask a lot of questions about um, uh, 
is whether paying for Google ads will help with your SEO rankings. And the truth of the matter is, is that it won't. Um, and it's pretty easy to test this. I mean, if you wanted to uh, check your rankings now, buy ads, and then check your rankings again, you probably wouldn't see any difference. Um, so that one's pretty false. Not to say that paying for paid ads is a bad thing. Um, it certainly can be a useful strategy if you want to improve uh, paid traffic to your site, but it shouldn't affect your SEO strategy or traffic at all. And the second one is related to word count, whether word count has any effect on, on the uh, rankings of your site. And this is another one where that just doesn't seem to be the case. And in a sense, you could say it does. And I'll give this as a simple example. If you had a website with one word on your page um, versus a website with, you know, a thousand words, you know, the one with a thousand words will probably rank better, but that's only because there's not any context to the one with one word, right? So it's really a balancing act of, you know, does the page that you created answer to the question at hand? Um, and if it does, then it has a much better chance of ranking regardless of the word count of the page. Well, thank you guys for debunking those for us. I think, as I said, there's a lot of misinformation out there, so it's helpful to hear myth versus truth. So thank you guys for all of those great insights, and I hope they've been very helpful to our audience. I would love to turn it over now to our audience for questions. I know we've had a few come in already, um, so I can start us off with some of the questions that have already been submitted, but please feel free to keep adding your questions along the way. Again, you can use the Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen to do that. So one of our first questions here is, I don't currently have a website, and how should I build one so that I can get SEO traffic? And then once it is built, what are some steps that I can take to actually optimize it? I only have about two hours a week for this. So what's the best way for me to spend my time? Luca, can yeah, you I can take this one? Yeah, yeah, I'll take this one. Um, so, I mean, I think to build your website, you know, I mentioned earlier some website builders that exist. Depending on your skill level, I think those are a good place to start. So website builders like Wix, uh, Squarespace, and then I, I mentioned Vistaprint has one as well. Um, those are all great options, I think, um, to start because they're just drag and drop. You know, it's pretty simple. And in terms of like what stuff you can do with the site, I mean, I would just try to put content on your site that's relevant and, you know, do things that, uh, uh, some of the things that Katie mentioned, like some local keyword research, um, and try to put content on the page that tries to target those terms a little bit. So Google figures out, oh, okay, uh, this website uh, is in, you know, Boston, Massachusetts, and they serve, um, you know, an Italian restaurant type of deal. Um, you know, any, anything like that, that gives people information and Google information, I think are things to work on, even with two hours a, a week. Awesome. Thank you. That sounds like a great place to start. So I have another question here uh, for Alexa. I'm a small business owner and I'm trying to use social to help my business get found online. What social platform do you recommend that I focus on? Um, you know, I would say I think Instagram right now is definitely where the most eyeballs are at. Um, of course, it depends on what the business is specifically, but I would say um, you know, any consumer package, good retail, um, uh, restaurants, of course, I think Instagram is a great place to start and to get people kind of aware of your brand and what's going on. And of course, having a website is a great home base um, that people can just go to and get all that information. Of course, if it's something that um, you can order online, you need that website to do that. Um, but also now with Instagram's product linking tool, you can shop directly from Instagram as well. So um, I would say in terms of shopping and influencer marketing, definitely Instagram is strong, but there is of course so much value in having that website as well. Perfect, totally agree, thank you. So we have a question now about blogs. Uh, Luca, I'll ask you to answer this one. Is adding a blog to my site a good idea and how can a blog help my business in SEO? 
Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And the answer um, is probably it depends, which no one ever likes that answer, but I think that's the case here. Um, and the reason why is because to figure out the answer to this question, I think you have to do keyword research first to see if there's a demand for a blog uh, related to the content that you're trying to write about. And I think in a majority of the cases, that is the case. But there are certain cases where you, your time might be better spent somewhere else uh, depending on the stage of your website. So if you haven't done any link building, if you haven't uh, set up your Google My Business page, I would focus on those things first um, because those are really the starting points to getting SEO traffic. Whereas the blog, um, while it can definitely be helpful, especially if you have a good strategy around it, uh, is probably secondary to those other things. Okay, perfect, thank you. So Katie, maybe you could take this next one. If my business is not on a Google Maps listing yet, how can I get it listed? So I think I was talking about with the Google My Business profile are really important. So I would say definitely make sure that you've implemented your address into that Google My Business listing. You can also do that on Apple Maps. So make sure that you've gone straight to those platforms and implemented um, inputted your business there. That's probably the best way to make sure. Um, aside from that, make sure that your address is on your website somewhere. You know, just give all those cues to Google so that Google knows exactly where you're based. Great, thank you. Maybe you can take this next one as well for us. Um, so we've said uh, earlier that reviews can help with local SEO. So this question is, uh, how can I get people to write more reviews about my business on Google? Yeah. So actually generate a link from your Google My Business listing, which um, is just a link that you can send out to your customers and they can click it and immediately will be able to write a review, which will be left on your Google My Business listing. So that's a great way to get reviews. And like I said earlier on, I think now is a great time to really start reaching out. So you could share that link on social media. You could share it with your customers via email. You know, just try and get that out there uh, as much as you can. Make it as easy as you can for people. Most people are more than willing to leave you a review. It's just they haven't got around to it or they don't have time. Um, so I think now is a great time to really focus on that. Awesome. Thank you. I had no idea that link could be created automatically. That's very good to know. So our next question, I don't have a marketing budget. Is all of SEO free? How much will it cost? Katie, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. There are loads of things you can do yourself for SEO that are completely free. Um, there are other things that aren't free, so you can buy tools, but a lot of the things that you do with SEO are totally free. There is so much great content online about how to do things, so I would definitely recommend taking a little bit of time and reading up on some different blogs and really thinking about what your goals are and how you can do some of those things yourself. If you, further down the line, felt that SEO was really important to your business, you could look into getting an agency. I would say with agencies, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. So be really careful when you're selecting an agency, make sure that they know, you know, you're very aware of what they believe the results that they're gonna get are. You know, if they tell you you're gonna be on page one for Google for all of the top keywords, like steer well clear. Thank you, that's very good to know. Um, we'll definitely keep in mind that if it sounds too good to be true, it is for an agency but it is nice to hear that it's generally a pretty low budget tactic. Very helpful right now. So our next question, how long does it take for my website to get ranked in Google? Luca, can you take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so the answer to this question is, again, it depends. And I've worked on a lot of different websites and the time it takes for rankings to change varies wildly. Sometimes it's a day, Sometimes it's two weeks. So it's really difficult to tell. I mean, I believe that the time it takes to adjust rankings for Google depends on how important it thinks your site is. And like it was mentioned earlier, importance is kind of delineated by links, how many links you have pointing to your site. So the more links you have going to your site, I think the faster you'll see ranking updates and increase Increases. It's really hard to tell. I mean, if, if you're a new site just starting out, I would say it takes at least a week or two, you know, to start seeing changes. Thank you. I think the 
how Google works um, is definitely a bit of a mystery for many of us. So it's helpful to have a, a time frame in mind. Um, this next question here, going back to reviews, actually, um, someone says, unfortunately, I've received some negative reviews in the past. And will that hurt my SEO ranking? Katie, can you take this? Sure, so no, don't worry about it. It happens to everyone. Almost every business has some negative reviews. So don't worry about it. Like I said earlier, the best thing to do is just to go back to them, respond to them, show that you, you know, that you're a friendly business you know, and, and just don't worry too much about it. Just focus on getting as many good reviews as you can. Don't worry about the bad ones once you've responded. Totally agree. I think, again, myself as a consumer, when I see that a business has responded to a negative review, I definitely take that as a positive signal. Alexa, maybe you can take our next one here. The question is, I want to keep posting on social even during all of this going on to keep my business visible. Do different platforms need different messaging? Um, I would say, you know, obviously depending on the platform, um, the way that you write something out is different, right? Yeah. If you're talking Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, but I think the tone and the overall message that you're trying to get across can definitely be the same. Um, I think, again, it just has to be sensitive to what's going on. If you're, um, you know, promoting loungewear, you're mentioning that you're in quarantine and this is great for being at home. I think just keeping sure that, you know, you're keeping everything on brand with what's currently going on. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of brands had social media calendars um, amongst several other things that they had to reevaluate at this time. Um, so I think as long as that messaging continues to be consistent and relevant, it's pretty much fair game. Perfect. Thank you. So our next question, a friend of mine mentioned to me that SEO requires website coding. Is that true? I don't know how to code and where can I learn? Luca, can you take this one for us? Yeah, um, so you definitely don't need to know how to code to make a very valuable website. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, build their sites on WordPress, which is um, a perfectly uh, reasonable platform to build on. And that really doesn't require any coding knowledge. And like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of website builders, which are totally fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them for your small business. So I think there's a lot of options out there. You know, if you, if you know how to code, you'll have more options with what you can do, but they're really not necessary for most small businesses. Awesome. So building on that, uh, this next question, this person does have a website already but it isn't mobile friendly yet. And it has a lot of pictures, but not a lot of text. And can they still benefit from SEO? Yeah, I think they definitely can. Um, you know, there's, I can't remember what the study was, so don't quote me on this, but I think a majority of the sites, like the top 1 million sites, a majority of them aren't mobile friendly at this point in time. So you're definitely not alone if you don't have a mobile friendly website. Um, in terms of, not having a lot of text and having a lot of photos. I think it depends what kind of service you're, you're providing and what people are looking for. You know, if you don't have enough text to target those terms that you probably did uh, keyword research on or that you could do keyword research on, then you might want to add some more text in, in that case. But uh, it probably depends and you have to do some research on it. But that in itself shouldn't be a hindrance, um, I wouldn't say. Okay, thank you. Alexa, can you take this next one? Um, what if a business that I support doesn't have a website or a social presence? How can I still highlight them or give them a shout out right now? Um, well, you can just call them up by phone. So definitely do that and see what they're doing, right? So maybe if they aren't on social media, they might still be open doing local delivery or takeout. Um, so you can definitely promote that. Um, a lot of restaurants have created GoFundMe pages. Um, that's a great place to donate. You can also buy a gift card. Um, and if they are open, another great thing I've seen people do is order food from that restaurant and send it to a hospital. Um, so there are a lot of ways to help out. And again, if they're, they don't have a social media presence or website, just pick up the phone and call them and see what they're doing. 
and I'm sure they'd be grateful for any kind of help, open or closed. Those are awesome ideas. Thank you. I love those, especially the one about sending delivery to hospitals. That's yeah, awesome. that's been definitely um, popular here. A few restaurants started doing that last week, and we've seen it um, kind of grow in popularity over the last few days. Really nice. Luca, can you take this next one? If I make a lot of changes to my website, will that impact when and where my search listing shows up in Google? Yeah, I mean, if you're making changes that uh, will benefit your site, so if you did keyword research or if you got backlinks to your site, you know, those changes you'll, you'll definitely see in Google rankings. But I mean, if, if you're only just changing, you know, like some arbitrary type thing, if you only changed, um, I don't know, the colors of your background on your site or maybe your background images, those aren't things that will change your, your SEO rankings. Uh, in themselves. Uh, so I think it depends on the type of change, but if, if they're good changes that target uh, SEO keywords and, and that type of thing, then yes. But if they're arbitrary, then I would say no. Okay, great to know. Thank you. Our next question here is, should I add my business to local directories? Katie, can you take that one? Sure. So you definitely should add your business to local directories if you think that's going to help your business, if you think it's going to send traffic your way, if you think people are going to be able to find you on those directories, you should definitely add your business there. Um, I don't think you're going to see overnight SEO success just from adding your business to a directory, but you definitely should add it if you believe that um, it's going to help your business for sure. Okay. Thank you. And maybe you can take our next one here too. I hear SEO is a long-term strategy. What are the things I should focus on first for the best short-term gain? So that's definitely true. SEO is a long-term strategy and the more you do, the more results you'll see as time goes on. Um, short-term, I would say really those things we discussed at the beginning, like the Google My Business profile, that is probably the quickest and easiest thing you're going to see um, an impact from. So definitely that kind of thing and you know the other things doesn't mean you shouldn't do them, but there may be more long-term strategies, but the Google My Business listing, you can definitely um, start getting it immediately. Perfect, thank you. I just want to call out this next question that I'm going to ask is one of the last questions that we have up right now. So if you do have additional questions, please submit those now. Otherwise, we'll be going on to another section. So just submit your questions if you have additional ones and we'll definitely take those. So our next question here, how important is content marketing in terms of my SEO ranking? And how long should a blog post be to get the most out of keyword ranking? Luca, could you take that one? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so we kind of touched upon word count a little earlier uh, in this, this session here. And again, there's no hard and fast rule for word count. Essentially, you want to make whatever your post or page is about long enough to either answer um, your customer's query or whatever topic you're trying to talk about, or, um, you know, because if you're doing that, then you're essentially doing what Google wants you to do, which is helping customers. Uh, in terms of content marketing strategies and if they're helpful and how they're helpful, they certainly can be. You know, there's millions and millions of terms that people search on a regular basis. So if you have content that answers the questions for those terms that people are looking for answers for, you know, then that content will definitely help you uh, rank in Google who's looking to connect people with questions to people with answers. So in that sense, they will help. But I will say uh, you still want to focus on something like link building to make sure that Google finds your site, it thinks it's important, and ranks your content accordingly. Thank you. So we did have one more question come through. Um, this one's for Alexa. Alexa, what's been the most efficient way or ways for new local restaurants to get their business growing through Instagram? Um, I would say um, influencer marketing is huge, especially here in New York. So um, number one, I would say um, sharing great photos of your food 
on your social platforms. So, um, you know, I know, especially for someone like me, and I think this is the case for most people who eat out now, they like to see the food that they're going to eat beforehand. So I think having um, that great content on your page is really important, showcasing whatever um, the product is going to be. And then I would say, you know, in terms of influencer marketing, it's really great to have local you know, influencers who people in the neighborhood or the area trust to come in and try the food, um, you know, whether they're just sharing stories and Instagram posts. And again, that can be twofold because then the restaurant can use that content. And um, I would definitely say, you know, if you don't, you know, this is again, definitely can be used as a more strappy approach if you don't have, let's say a large PR firm or marketing agency, um, it's definitely a quick and easy way to get people through the door and raise awareness and get you, you know, a larger following, a larger audience, get eyeballs to your page and things like that. Good ideas. Thank you. So I haven't seen any additional questions come in beyond that last one that we just got. So we're going to close this one out. We will be hosting these discussions multiple times per week um, on various relevant topics. And we absolutely want your help as the audience for that. So please be sure to fill out the survey at the end to tell us what you want to hear. You can also send your questions to homeofficehours at vistaprint.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram to stay up to date on the episodes that are coming up. Next Friday, you can tune in for running your business online. And our group of experts are going to be guiding you through setting up your online presence the importance of the information that you display, and really how you can thrive running your business online during this time when it's so important. In the meantime, you can find some more information by visiting vistaprint.com and checking out the Small Business Support Hub. So before we go, I would like to e ask each of our panelists for what their number one takeaway is from today's conversation. And Luca, maybe you can get us started off. Yeah, for me, uh, I'd say my number one tip is definitely link building, link building, link building. Um, and the reason for that is most small businesses don't do that. And even though that's the case, um, I think link building and links is one of the most important ranking factors to Google. So even if you're building one or two links a month, if you do that consistently over time, then you're going to get SEO traffic and you're going to rank above your competitors. Okay, thank you. And Alexa, how about you? Um, I would say, you know, kind of in lines of what I mentioned before is to really um, use this time to pull your audience, see what they want, be providing solutions to problems or issues that they're having um, during this time and be there for them, you know, for support and help, whatever that may be. And, you know, try to do our best with balancing that fine line between moving along with business as usual and also being sensitive to what people are going through. And Katie, let's end with you. So for me, it's really the Google My Business listing. So make sure you really, you claim your listing, you filled it out as much as you can. You're using all the features available to you. There's been so many changes with the way Google displays results um, in the last few years. And your Google My Business listing is really the best way to take advantage of that. So that's mine. Great. Well, thank you everyone for your curiosity and for your time. This has been Home Office Hours Live with Vistaprint, and we'll talk with you soon.